Hi, Grace. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am Savannah Gold. You all have been supporting me as a young adult volunteer for the past year. And for those of you who do know me, I'm back and I missed you. <laughs> Um, I have loved you all this entire year from a long ways away, so it's nice to love you in person this Sunday. Also, I have to give a special shout out to the audiovisual team. I was you, and you all are amazing, and yeah, they're just great. They're doing a great job. <laughs> you know, um, being a part of this incredible program, it's, it's really an honor to hear to hear other stories about, about your time this year, Meg, and, um, and also a reminder, too, of how much it, it rings true, some of what you said about like living and doing the grassroots work in this world, and it is beautiful and heartbreaking and exciting and challenging, um, and it's a similar experience that the three of us in Albuquerque had. So originally, when I was placed for the Young Adult Volunteer Program, I was placed in Colombia, the country. And um, after some political movements and a lack of access to COVID resources, the site was pulled. And I was placed in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And it has been exactly where I was supposed to be this entire year. I lived with two other young adult volunteers, Peter, who worked at Lutheran Family Services, you all may have heard of them because they um, received the government contract to welcome in the uh, Afghani refugees. Um, and Emma, who worked at New Mexico Wild and did a lot of the really good and deeply needed conservation work and had hard conversations and worked to empower the communities after the New Mexico fires wreaked havoc on our state. And I worked at two separate job placements. I worked at Second Presbyterian Church and Santa Fe Dreamer Project. And it was a cool and incredibly difficult space to work in. I got to travel all through New Mexico, go to places like Ghost Ranch, where Georgia O'Keeffe painted some of her most famous Black Mesa paintings. I got to get chickens, and so I'm now the proud mother of two very adorable chickens. Uh, and they make little eggs for me every day. I went to Guatemala and saw Second Presbyterian Church's version of our Honduras trip and missed you all greatly, and I can't wait to hear about Honduras. And I watched as we did medical mission and made art with kids and was reminded of the beautiful, wonderful ways that we are a global community and have responsibility to and joy in the communities that we share. I worked to run a small LGBTQ plus refugee center out of a small apartment and had hard conversations about what Title 42 meant for spaces like that and the threats that our immigration system and refugee and asylum systems hold for people who don't identify as heterosexual. I watched as resources became hard points of conversation for people who had no access to anything and had challenging conversations with community members as I tried to find resources for these people. And at the end of the day, the work that is hardest to do is the work that is most deserved by people in these situations. And that's dignity work. That's reminding them that the, their place in this world is beautiful and should be protected. And should be protected a lot more than one person can offer. And that's kind of the hard truth of doing some of the work as a young adult, adult volunteer is I am here to help as I can, but at the end of the day, I am not the most important person in the room. I do not have all of the power and I cannot provide all the things, but I can do what's within my capacity and I can do it damn well. I think one of the, the hardest stories that I had to follow along was um, helping a man going through the deportation process this year. and reminding myself that I am not the one who has all the answers and that sometimes connecting him to 
people who do have those resources was more important than me wanting to be involved in that work. And so after a long two months of trying to battle with ICE and with access to food and understanding paperwork to travel in the middle of a pandemic, I found an organization that was going to be a much better asset for this man being deported. Hard conversations are an essential part of the YAV year, and they're some of the most beautiful moments of growth. You know, we are hands and feet coming into a space that isn't ours, and we have an honor, the honor to be part of the work that is done. And also, we have a reminder, too, that we are not the most important people at the table, and celebrating the people that we get to serve is, is really beautiful. I'm excited to tell you all that I'm still going to live in Albuquerque and work with an LGBTQ plus medical center there. And it's an honor to continue to serve in this community. But I wanted to thank you all too for the energy and the time and the phone calls and the cards that we received nonstop because it was a moment of deep breath in very, very chaotic situations and in beautiful moments. And I have loved being loved by you all, and I'm excited to continue to love the world in Albuquerque. Thanks.